Hello everyone! In today's video, I'm going to be talking a little bit about the first Varuchaku and how we can tackle it from a C perspective. So, as we all know, one of the hardest things about learning the Rust programming language is, of course, the community, the Varuchaku. And essentially what the Varuchaku is, is a way for the Rust compiler to ensure that you're handling memory safely. So, how do we start about going into this? Well, first let's discuss how we handle memory in C, memory management. And we do that through various tools like pointers, malloc, and free. So essentially in C, when we don't know the size of memory, when it's a dynamic memory, we have memory that's allocated on the heap. Right? So this is the heap, and this is a stack. And essentially the heap is, you can think of it as like a heap of like clothes. And in this heap, we can store memory that can be dynamically sized. <clears throat> so let's say we have a memory slot here, and we call it x. And x is an integer on the heap. Let's say x takes on the value of 54. Well, in the stack, we have to have a pointer that keeps track of where this x is. It's like sort of finding a needle in the haystack, right? It's a lot easier to find that needle if you have a tracker that points to where the needle is. And that's essentially what a pointer is. So in this heap, let's say we have the memory location called 100, and this is the address of x. On the stack, we might have a variable called y, which is an integer pointer, right, an int star, and this int pointer points to this x. And essentially, this y keeps track of the address of x, so when we dereference y, we get the value inside of x, which is 54. So this is how we ma manage memory in C, dynamic memory. And the main problem here is that once we are done using x, we have to remember as a programmer to free the x, right? And this is just sort of the basics of memory management. But if you have memory allocated, you have to deal with it somehow. And one of the ways to do that is with a free. But if you don't remember to free your memory, you can run into stuff like memory leaks. Or even worse, uh, there's some exploits that can, that, that can be done with memory like this. So how do we go about handling this? I have an example here. And we're just going to make a simple C program. Let's say we want to add two numbers. So we have an int add, we're taking two ints, int x, int y, and then we're going to, oh, int x, int y, and we're going to return some of the numbers. So down here, we're going to make two integers, let's call them x uh, equals 4, and then int uh, y equals 5. Now, we're going to say an int z, and then we're going to add x and y together. Pretty straightforward. And if we end up printing this, let's print this uh, z value out. We should expect the program to print, you guessed it, 10. No, it's, it's 9. So when we add these two numbers, right, it's a pretty straightforward program. x plus y, we get 9. Now, Let's say instead of making a copy of this memory, we instead want to get a reference to that memory. And we do that in C by making a pointer, right? So we're saying that x is a pointer to a place in memory, and y is also a pointer to a place in memory. Now if we dereference x and y, we can end up adding these two numbers together, and then we'll have to remember that instead of passing these as a copied, uh, copied object, we want to pass them as references, the address of x and the address of y. And this should produce the same output, yep, that we see 9. So essentially what we're doing here is instead of copying the value of x, we're passing x as a pointer. Now, let's say instead of this add function returning a value, we instead want to actually modify the value of x in order to say that, for example, we have a, if you have x and four, uh, if you have x equals four and y equals five, when we add these two numbers. I want x to be equal to nine, the sum of the two numbers. So we're going to make this a void function, and instead of returning this, 
we're going to dereference x, and then we're just going to add y on top of it. So you'll notice that, let me do this real quick, uh, print x. You'll notice that if we don't allocate, if you don't give a pointer to this memory, right? If we just do something like this, intuitively we think this is going to produce 9 as an output because x is 4, y is 5, we're adding 5 onto 4. But because this memory is local, right, this x is local to this function, we end up getting 4 because this x actually doesn't change. So in order to make a change, we have to pass along a pointer. Let's see, we have a pointer to x plus equals y. We're going to get the address of x instead, and this should be A-OK. -okay. So we get 9 back as expected, and essentially what's going on here is instead of taking a local value, instead of taking a local value of x, we're passing the pointer to x. So when we actually do this assignment here, we are going to change the value of x that's in main instead of changing the value of x in a local variable. And this is what passing by reference does. But here's something, uh, here's something that we might want to do. Instead of making x a static memory, right, we might want to dynamically allocate x. And we can do that by using a malloc. <clears throat> so if we malloc x, what this is doing is we're going to allocate memory on the heap and we're going to assign the pointer to x. So if we dereference x and we assign it to 4, we can ignore the address because x is already a pointer and then we're going to have to dereference it again here. Great, so we're allocating memory on the heap instead of the stack now and let's see what happens. Everything goes as expected, but there's a problem here we never freed this memory. This memory is just now in the void of our computer. It's sort of like we lost a needle in the haystack and we didn't take it out before the program ended. So as, a, as any good programmer should do, we should free our memory after we use it. And this is where the problem comes in because we ourselves have to deal with this memory inside a language like C. And again, this one's perfectly fine but there's some caveats here, right? We have to remember to do stuff like free when we do a malloc and we have these pointers hanging around. What happens if we do a double free? Well, our program crashes because we freed this variable twice and there's no longer a needle to take out of the haystack. So this is one of the main downsides of a language like C is that given so much low level control, you have to think about how to handle the memory yourself. So, how does Rust handle this? Well, Rust has something called the borrow checker, which is a great system for handling how its memory is being tossed around the system. Let's say we have the same function, right? We're going to recreate the same thing. So function add, we're going to take in an x, which is i32, y, and we return x plus y. Now down here, we're going to say uh, let x equals 4, let y equals 5, 5, and then we're going to say let z equals add, and we're going to say print ln. I just want to print out z, I think. There we go. And as expected, we get 4 plus 5, which is equal to 9. So let's start doing the same steps we did as the C program. We have this x here, instead of passing it as a copy, let's actually pass a reference. And this is how you do it in Rust. As you can see, it's very similar to the C program where we did void add int x int y, and we did return x plus y. It's very similar to, oh, whoops. It's very similar to what we did before in the C program where you just have these two values, but instead of passing them as copies, we pass them as pointers. So this is essentially what the Rust program is doing right now. We have these references, we're, we're borrowing the values of x and y instead of making a copy. And down here, you guessed it, we have to pass it in as a borrowed object.
So if we run this again, we, put, we get 9 back. Easy enough. Now let's say we want to do what we did up here. Now let's do the first iteration of what we tried to do. So what we tried to do at first was uh, instead of passing them as bowed, we just said x. Uh, we, we're not going to return anything here. We're going to say x plus equals y. And as you can see, one of the great things about Rust is we're already getting errors, right? X cannot be mutated. So I was actually going to try to show how we could mess it up, but it actually caught this here. So we're going to jump straight into the next step in that we're going to try to do the same thing that we did in the C program over here in Rust. Now, in this case, we're going to be mutating X. So instead of having it as a constant, we have to mutate it. And we can ignore this bar over here. That's fine. Um, and up here, right? Instead of taking it as just a borrow, because as you can see, we can't use this plus equals on an immutable variable. In this case, we want to be able to mutate x. And then we pass this in as a mutable borrow. So over here, we will dereference x, and then we will add onto a y. And as you can see, uh, we don't actually need a z here. We can just print l and x, and we get 9 back. So this is basically the equivalent of the C program. Except in Rust, what you'll notice is that we don't need this free. Because of what the Rust borrow checker is doing is it's keeping track of all of these intricate details, right, about how memory is being handled. So that we have stuff like the mute and the borrow, we're saying essentially that, oh, as the add function, I want to be able to borrow this value of x. And after borrowing it, as a good function should do, we will return this memory back to you. We will return sort of ownership of the memory back to its original place. So that at the end of this main, you can think of it as having like an implicit free, right? It's the Rust compiler is automatically handling all this memory for you because it knows exactly where the memory is going. Because for example, something dangerous we could do up here is instead of freeing it in main, we could free this memory up here. And when we do actually run this, we get this strange value. What is this? 5987? What's happening here is we're freeing the memory at x, and now it's this garbage memory. And we did it before this memory is even accessed. So it's just really confusing to handle memory in a language like this. Which I'm not saying it can't be done. There's obviously great C programs, but one of the great uh, pros of a Rust program is the borrow checker, of course and that it handles all of these details for you. So I hope this video was insightful for understanding the, understanding the Rust Borrow Checker. Hope you enjoyed the video, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.